Hello everyone, today I'm working on a true reach-in cooler here, stand-up one door that's not getting below 52 Fahrenheit. Alright, so we're going to pull up our refrigeration troubleshooting um, kind of flow chart here. All the checks that we're going to do before gauging up, so we're just going to check, make sure the evaporator coil is not frozen, check our fans, and we're going to check if our condenser coil is dirty, and then if our compressor is running. All right, so let's check our evaporator fan. It is running. Let's check our coil. We're free of frost. There's no ice on there. We're going to check our condenser coil. It is dirty. And our condenser fan is running. So our condenser coil has been cleaned. No change. So that means we have to gauge up at this point. So our pressures are 2 and 73 PSI. All right, so let's go figure out what our suction pressure and head pressure need to be. So we're gonna pull up r 134 APT chart. In order to figure out our suction pressure, we're gonna take our desired box temp and we're gonna subtract our EVAP TD. So in this case, our desired box temp is probably around 34 Fahrenheit. We're gonna subtract our EVAP TD, which in this case is a 20 TD Fahrenheit, and that's gonna give us 14 Fahrenheit All right now we're gonna come over to our PT chart and you'll find with 134a that you know the pressure more or less Equals the temperature so 14 Fahrenheit gives us 14.4 psi And we were getting 2 psi And for our head pressure we're gonna take our ambient temp and we're gonna add our condenser split. So in this case, we have a 15 Fahrenheit condenser split. So our ambient temp was 75 Fahrenheit. We're gonna add 15 Fahrenheit to that. And that gives us 90 Fahrenheit. Let's go over to our PT really quickly. 90 Fahrenheit equals 104 PSI. All right, so we had two PSI on our suction and we're looking for 14 PSI. And then on our high side, we had 73 PSI and we're looking for 104 PSI. So that means we have low suction and low head. All right, so we're gonna pull up our refrigeration troubleshooting flow chart. Low suction, low head means we have a low charge or a restriction. So we'll just hop back over to our refrigeration cycle chart. So if we have a restriction, that means the refrigerant's flowing through here and it's getting stuck right here at the cap tube and the dryer, okay? Or we don't have enough refrigerant in the system to push it through to this side and that's why we're only getting two PSI. So in order to determine whether we have a low charge or restriction, all we're gonna do is dump in a little bit of refrigerant. And one of two things are going to happen. If we dump in the refrigerant and we're low on charge, the refrigerant will now flow through this cap tube and dryer, and then our pressures here will bump up. Same thing with our head pressure. If we're restricted, if we're restricted and we're adding refrigerant, these pressures right here are not going to change. All right, so we're just going to dump in a little bit of refrigerant and see if the pressures change. All right, so I've added some refrigerant. You can see our pressures have now come up. They're eight and 138. They're not exactly what I want, but it tells me now that we're not restricted in the system and we're hunting down a leak. So let's go do a leak test and see if we can hunt this leak down. So here's our evaporator pan. I always like to look for oil and look at that. We kind of have oil near the back of the pan on the left and right hand side. So that's a pretty good indicator that, hey, we may have a leak in this coil. All right, so let's kind of go to those spots where we saw the oil leaking and we're getting a hit kind of somewhere in this area here where the oil was leaking. Let's go nice and slow here. And we definitely got a hit. It looks like it's on the U-bend, okay? So now these U-bends, sometimes we can repair them. We can braze them back up. So that is an option at the moment. But remember we had leak on the right-hand side of the evaporator pan. And look at that. We have a leak in the coil. This coil is no longer repairable. All right, so with the power of editing, look at that. We have a brand new coil. The customer has approved this repair. Um, it was probably around 30% the cost of a new unit. 
Um, I gave them both options. They want to repair the unit, so we're going to go ahead with it. And I just picked up this tool recently. I actually saw Pat from Commercial Kitchen Chronicles use this cap tube cutter. I've never actually seen one before. And so I decided to buy one. And look how clean this cut is. No more using a file and, you know, trying to get a clean cut. All right, so I've brazed in the new coil. What I'm doing here is pushing nitrogen through. And see what pressure I'm pushing it at? Around 12 PSI. Because that's the pressure we're going to use for this unit. Okay, so when you're blowing in a cap tube, yeah, you can go up to 100 PSI. But where I want to test it is at 12 PSI. And we have good pressure right now. All right, so let's just quickly go over why I was blowing out the cap tube there. First thing we want to do is make sure... You know, there's no restrictions or anything like that. So I always do that. You'll see me do that in every single video. The second reason why I do that is the cap tube is brazed into the evaporator coil right here. Early on in my career, I brazed that cap tube shut. Okay. So what happened was I brazed it shut. I vacuumed. I charged. I couldn't figure out what we kept going into a vacuum. I'm like, it's got to be the filter dryer. Okay. Let's go change that. It ended up being the cap tube, okay? So I said, I'm never gonna make that mistake again because it was super stressful. I couldn't figure out how I did it or why I did it. So this is what I do now. I will open up the system where the cap tube meets the dryer. We're gonna leave this just hanging outside of the cap tube. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow nitrogen from the compressor through this way, okay? And when we do that, what's gonna happen is air is gonna start coming out of the cap tube, okay? And that tells me that I haven't brazed this shut accidentally. And then the second point I was making is whenever you're blowing out a cap tube for you think you may have a restriction, you want to test it at the pressure that the system's going to be operating at. So it's great if you go to 100 PSI and you know you blow it all out. That's great. You could still be restricted. So when you get down to like your 14 PSI or the operating pressure you're looking to use, that's when you want to put your thumb on it and say, hey, I'm at 14 PSI. Am I getting little to no flow or am I getting good flow? I've had it where I'm at 14 PSI and it's barely trickling through. That means we are still restricted. Okay, so whenever we're doing this blowout procedure, we want to make sure we're doing it at the operating pressure. All right, so we passed our nitrogen test, our vacuum, and as you can see there, our condenser split is 13.8, so 14 Fahrenheit. I'm good with that. 13 suction, we're good with that. Temperature's coming down, this thing's cooling really quickly. We're already at 40 Fahrenheit. So one last thing I wanna show is, um, you have refrigerant in your hoses here, okay? So I remove my high side hose, I'm gonna crack it open, and I'm gonna slowly throttle it into the low side, okay? Keep in mind, um, this is liquid. We don't like liquid in the low side, especially going to the compressor. So we're gonna slowly throttle it in, and then that's gonna, ensure that we're not going to lose our critical charge and our unit cycled off we're at 36 fahrenheit we're all good 